diddle daddle. You don't understand the process. This is every day with you, boy. Ugh, you gotta give me a country whipping. Talking to Boss Hug over there. I'll get you, Duke boys. Is this is this only gonna be Joe and I making fun of Southern people this whole time? <laughs> Sweet Christmas. I'll tell you one time, I went, this had to be 2003, we drove down with my buddy to Florida, we were driving back up, and we stopped off at a, if you go off at 95, it was like we drove down like a little dirt road and went to a diner. And fucking, this was the fucking South. And the fucking, the sheriff was sitting there with all his fucking good old boys eating their fucking food. I had a shirt on that says, don't fuck with us. And it was like, it was like a patriotic food. So we got after 9-11, you know. Yeah. And um, the fucking, the waitress, we order, she comes and just throws the food at us. I guess you heard me talk. You know, we have that, yeah. you know, northern yeah. action. Yeah. And they, like, that was like something out of a fucking, what's that movie? The banjo. Deliverance. Deliverance. <laughs> yeah. Uh. I remember. I get my car for this. I'll make it to school like a pig. I had two oh, talk cheese. I had two uh, opportunities to meet some really interesting. Honestly, all my trips down south have been wonderful. People have really had great hospitality. It, it, it is a true thing, southern hospitality. Um, but I do remember meeting up with some people when booked for a wrestling show in North Carolina. Um, the address I was told to go to was the last trailer park at the top of the hill. So that should give uh, some understanding as to what was going on. These people, um, sweet Christmas. There was been fucking three teeth amongst them. It was absolutely ridiculous. Real fucking country fried. But then again, I'll be real though. I'll be real. There are some spots in Brooklyn, and you know elsewhere in, in New York City that can uh, certainly double as a deep south. I know there are parts of Garrison Beach that. Uh, you know, fucking motherfuckers look like they're Beverly Hillbillies. And I can say that because I grew up in Garrison Beach. There used to be a family over there that we called the fucking Hillbillies because none of them had shoes. We'd go out, we'd play like all night and hang out in the neighborhood and they, uh... This guy said I ruined his vacation. Now, fuck him. A month ago. Because I kept calling him and fucking messaging him. They never wore shoes. The whole family. Literally, none of them. Concrete streets and everything in Garrison Beach and they never had shoes on. Call them fucking Flintstones, call them the hillbillies. As fast as we can. You don't understand the process. How many people does it take to make a belt, you fucking country idiot? <laughs> this really is gonna be Joe and I making fun of southern people for the next fucking 20 or so minutes. Sweet Christmas. Ah. Oh. So, in the attempt to actually get some show promo in, he really pauses it. Oh, now we're back, apparently. Yeah. There you go. So that's right. Every state has that one area where it's not even a southern state, but everyone has southern accents. That's interesting. I, I found... I mean, well, I mean, Garrett said everyone just sounds like a fucking idiot New Yorker. And, like, everyone knows that idiot New Yorker accent. It just sounds like a... It's not like Vince Russo. Um, it's, it's a fucking... I do know there was somebody in Garrettson at one point. I used to go chill at my friend Carly's place. Uh, she was, like, deeper in on Garrettson Beach. And I'd skate over there, and uh, there was somebody flying a Confederate flag. And she's like, well, there's literally no reason, unless you're a country racist, to be uh, flying that shit, because you live in fucking Brooklyn, New York, you fucking dimwit. It's nothing fucking heritage-related, but I digress. Anyway, this weekend. Tomorrow, we have St. Finbar. Doors open 7 p.m., bell time 8 p.m., Billy Gunn wrestling on the card. Al Snow will be there signing autographs. Uh, was it eight matches we got? Nine matches. Nine massive, awesome matches. Next night, double cage main event, no limits, five way cage, and then separate from that, a War Games cage match. Uh, and Al Snow will be on the card. So, shit, so again. Manny Fernandez. Oh, yeah, Raging Bull Manny Fernandez, legend of wrestling. Uh, I'm fairly sure that nobody has anything better to do, so fucking show up anyway, God damn it! It's gonna be a great show. Don't pretend that you got something to do. Your family will forgive you. The shows are, these shows are fucking awesome. Well, we're actually, uh, we're, we're stuck in a bit of traffic right now, but we're going to pass by the place that, uh, Joe and I, oh, a former place, a place is gone. Uh, Where is it now? It's around the block, I think. Oh, well, it's close enough. Um, we're gonna pass by the place where Joe and I broke into the professional wrestling business, uh... The infamous... Yeah, Billy Gunn will also be signing tomorrow, yes. 
the infamous, anyway. illustrious, um, shithole. World famous baby. World famous gym baby. They not ready, pa. Gleason Gym, where Joe and I broke in. Joe, maybe give a little bit of uh, some insight on what Gleason's was when you started and then what it evolved to when you left. Well, when I started, it was January 98. You already seen guys like Devon was was gone, and Tommy was gone. Um, Vito, the day I joined, Vito was coming back from a tour of Puerto Rico. Uh, a few months later, once I joined, Vito would be there regularly. In fact, I would drive with him, and we would train on Saturdays, and it would be a long day because I'd be there with him 11 a.m. till 6 p.m. when it closed. And everybody knows Big Vito; his his, his training was rough. I, I now I'm happy I, I did that, but. Uh, so, and then you had guys like Larry Briscoe. Like I said this all before, these, like you had guys that were trained actually by Johnny. When I think Vito was actually the last person that Johnny trained. Because after that, Johnny would go into the office or would stop training people. And it became other people training people. And once you do that, stuff gets lost along the way. Like Johnny trained Vito. I'm sure Vito doesn't know everything that Johnny knows. Right. And then Vito, let's say, trained me. But I don't know everything that Vito knows. You know what I mean? And then it gets watered down, watered down, watered down. Um... The training there at the time when I was there, like I said, learning from Vito and Angel and Briscoe, um, even you know Bad Billy Walker, it's it, it, I learned a lot. Um, but as you know, I, I would take time off and come back. Every time I come back, it'd just be schmucks there. He's a schmuck. He's a schmuck. He's a schmuck. But it, it, it was really um, now. I don't know what it is now. I mean, we've been gone 10, 10 years. I'd say. I'm saying once you ended up leaving, like at the time. Which time? The last time? Yeah. Ten years ago? Yeah, when we all left. It was terrible. It was... <laughs> I don't even know who who, would, who the trainers were there at the time. I mean, how about this? How about you tell, how, from a student, from a brand new student's point of view, going in and working out. I know I would try to do drills with guys, and I, and I think I helped guys like Mike Inferno and Pete Simmons and shit like that. I don't know... I know Smooth was a good worker. I don't know how he was as far as a trainer. Smooth is very good as a trainer. I, I, I don't know. I don't know if he trained guys. I know Flex, when he wasn't fucking around, you know, was was knowledgeable. I, but I don't know if he, like, it definitely wasn't like our school. It wasn't like you know, uh, actually running class. Like it was, it was all right. I'll do drills for ten minutes and then fuck it. It's just full around time. The same thing like guys like Ricky Vega who was there. I, I don't know if he actually Ricky Vega took the time to train people. I don't know what these guys are doing. Um, well, I'll say this. When I was, that's a question for you. Because when I was on my way out, it was... I mean, I've, I've touched on this elsewhere, but when I was on my way out, it was... I mean, you want to talk watered down. I mean, you go from Vito to someone like, you know, Mikey Firezone, yeah, who's now training people over... From what I hear, is now training people over there. Um, what is that guy going to fucking teach you? He hasn't been anywhere. He hasn't done anything. Uh, he's trained at the same school for 10 years. I mean... Say what you want about me, but I mean, I've wrestled all over. I learned from a lot of different people, been to a lot of different seminars to pick up a lot of shit. You know, as is anybody, you know, J. George fucking trained in Mexico for quite some time. He's bringing a different style to everything, so you don't just get stuck with that one style, that one way of doing things. You know, wrestling is, uh, I always say it's like water, it's adaptive. Like, you need to be able to adapt to your surroundings. You know, whether you're in a cup or a bowl or fucking anything. It's it's ridiculous that that's how much has become watered down. But you know what it is? Johnny doesn't care anymore. Right? And that's the truth. Johnny taught people the right way. They, they, my personal feelings against the guy is one thing, but I'm proud to say where I came from. The thing is, he don't care anymore. He cares about the money. Money, baby. Don't get me wrong. He cares about the people. Money, money, and, money, and, money, and money. Paying money. that fifteen hundred or three thousand or say I don't whatever, whatever his fee is now. I'm sure it's went up since nineteen ninety eight. Whenever you join, how much you paid, but that's what he cares about now. He don't give a shit if a guy, if the only guy drops down that that uh, that dollar, the money, he could quit the next day. He could give a fuck. Um, so he don't give a shit. Like, or you know, if the guy can sell tickets, then they'll make sure this guy, you know, make sure he's ready, baby. You know, make sure he's ready. That's what it, that's what it's become now. When I was last there, and I'm sure nothing has changed now. I know they brought in that fucking that uh, Mexican guy. Who was, who was raping people and uh, fucking charging the next amount of money to bring in Mexican wrestlers from Mexico. Uh, I'm sure he's not robbing Johnny because Johnny's not going to fall for that, but he's got some money guy paying it, I'm sure, you know? Tremendous. 
Don't you love this shit? Wrestling's a dirty ass business. Truly really a dirty, disgusting business. But yeah, so. Now that we're well past Gleason Jim. That was funny, I was talking to um to Mike Law today. And Mike stiff little prick. <laughs> I've never had any issues with Mike. But I digress. Mike was talking to me about all the drama that was the, the original doghouse. <laughs> Which, I mean, truth be told, Doghouse produced a lot of guys that you're seeing on TV now. You know, Loki, Homicide. Um, that's a lot. Well, it's for a small amount of time. Two guys. I, honestly, that's probably more. I can't even think of them off the top of my head. Uh, but they also, Doghouse produced a ton of Northeast Indie guys from when I guess I was breaking into things. Christopher Street Connection, who were uh, you know, pretty awesome. Uh, Low Life Louie's an awesome dude. Uh... You know, the doghouse was, I think, the two places that I knew when, when you know, wrestling. Papa Don's another guy that, uh, uh, you know, Troy mentioned here. Um, Who? Uh, but, Five but, Borough. But these guys, these guys aren't, these are fucking Lindy guys. Who are they? Nobody. Uh, Loki was on I, WWE I, I TV. Loki and Homicide is the only, you named two guys. I mean, you said a lot. I, I, I'm sure there's, I can't even think off the top of my head, but I'm saying there was a lot of guys who came out of there at the, at a time, the dog had us had a reputation of, uh, these guys know how to work in terms of the Northeast guys. Because again, you didn't see, jo- you didn't see Johnny Ross's guys on the Indies. No, they were in ECW. Mm, really? Yeah, really. Okay, so when I was breaking in in 2005. Oh, when you were breaking in. Yes. I don't believe the doghouse was doing much of anything in 2000, 2001. Around that time when ECW towards the end. Well, actually, Tim Larson was in Puerto Rico when you were breaking in. He was? Ricky Vega was in TNA when you were breaking in. Ricky Vega was in TNA for, if you can call it, a cup of coffee. That was an espresso shot when he was in the fucking TNA for. No, Papadon Russell. Was he doing Impact? Okay. Um, go ahead. You're really going to sit there and say that Johnny Rods is the reason that fucking Ricky Vega was in TNA? Do you remember the story of Ricky That's Vega? Right uh, here's a funny story about Matt Stryker because Joe wants to sit there and say, oh, Johnny Rod takes credit for Matt Stryker. Here's what happened with Matt no, Stryker. I'm saying, you know, Low Life Louie, who are these people? I'm saying they were on the independence when I was breaking in. Oh, so what? Okay. So yeah. who was the new Dynamite Kid? I don't know where he trained. Probably the doghouse. No, I doubt it. He was a Long Island guy, so no. <laughs> Same shit. No, nah, 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 not really. New Dynamite Kid. Anybody out there who knows the new Dynamite Kid? <laughs> that guy's a hero to many. It's amazing. But no, the place had a reputation in terms of the independence where the Northeast Indies was a ton of doghouse guys. But Mike was telling me about all the fucking shit that had gone down and the original split from Arena Puerto Rico. And it was just, you know, interesting tidbits of, of history in terms of, like, where people went and what they did. I, know, I found it interesting. I know Joe has no interest unless it was King Kong Bundy. But... Such is life. I don't know what King Kong Bunny has to do with the split in Puerto Rico, but... Arena Puerto Rico. Whatever. Just about to run this guy over in the street. He's getting frustrated. I think he's still thinking about his belts. (laughs) (sighs) So anyway, I'm starting to wind down. So I'm going to shut this down. Warriorsofwrestling.com. Warriors of Wrestling on YouTube, Facebook, Twitter... Find us anywhere. We're all over the place. Go ahead and give us a follow. Uh, you can follow me on social media, King of Chaos NYC, on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Tomorrow night, Warriors of Wrestling invades Brooklyn, comes back to Brooklyn. Front row is almost sold out. Yeah, front row is pretty much sold out, so you're probably going to have to settle for GA unless... Uh, get there early. Unless you get there real early. Uh, Billy Gunn in the main event. Saturday night. We are back in Staten Island at Fun Station at our home. Killing it with a double cage main event. Again, these are shows y'all don't want to miss. Super awesome stuff. Um, that's about it. Say goodbye, Joe. Goodbye. Say goodbye, Donnell. Later. Or you can kind of see him. Smile. Later, guys.